Apple's M4 MacBooks are coming in just a couple of months and the Windows competition is on a rampage this year with the newly released X Elite chip, as well as the massively leaked AMD Strix Point and Intel Lunar Lake chips that are both coming to try to steal Apple's lunch. So for this video, I've compiled a huge collection of all of the leaked data and benchmarks into a bunch of charts so you don't have to, and I'm also going to share my thoughts on which chip is going to give the best battery life, seeing as the X Elite is already disrupting the Windows laptop industry. So before I get into revealing and analyzing the charts, I want to do a quick rundown of each chip and when we should expect them to get released. The launch of AMD's new chip just got delayed until July 28th, and it's a relatively simple x86 chip update, pushing for higher performance in terms of both the CPU and the GPU. But Intel's Lunar Lake chip has been redesigned from the ground up to focus on efficiency, even getting the core count cut down in half from 16 cores to eight and going from six performance cores down to just four. So Intel is clearly sacrificing performance for battery life, even going as far as to pay TSMC big bucks for their new three nanometer N3B node instead of using their own fabs, which would have saved them money. And this Lunar Lake chip should be launching this September, according to recent leaks. And finally, we have Apple's M4 chip, which should be going into the MacBooks this October or November, built on TSMC's second gen N3E node with brand new core designs that have the biggest IPC improvement since the original M1 chip. And of course, we have the already available X Elite, which is a CPU powerhouse while also getting incredibly impressive battery life. So with that said, let's jump into the performance charts, which I've compiled from tons of various leaks that have popped up on Twitter over the past couple of weeks. For starters, we have Geekbench 6's single core test, and we have leaks for all of the chips, including the brand new M4. As you can see, the M4 is so far ahead of the competition. Apple is just killing it in terms of IPC, and it's also due to the SVE2, which Geekbench 6.3 is now taking advantage of, so it's a little bit better in terms of that. But in general, we can see that Apple's M3 is still leading the rest of the pack, which they're all about 2700 to 2900 in terms of single core performance, with the X Elite surprisingly a little bit ahead of the AMD. And interestingly, we have Intel trailing behind by just a little bit. And now if we move that over to general snappiness or web browser performance or also like web-based apps that you would normally use, we tested Speedometer 2.1. And by the way, we did have to estimate the performance of the AMD chip since we couldn't find that leak. So we kind of based it off the single core, which is the number one thing that impacts it. And here you can see that Apple's M3 is definitely by far the fastest along with the M3 Pro with the M4 going even further ahead. But in general, all three of the Windows chips are fairly close in terms of speedometer 2.1 web browsing performance. They are now all very, very snappy, probably matching up to how good the M2 chip was before or maybe even better. And now with that said, let's move on to something that has a lot of differences, which is Geekbench 6 is multi-core test, looking at the performance that you're gonna see in lots of productivity apps that use the CPU. But first, I wanna show you the first ever smart projector for under $100. The Easy D1 from our sponsor, Orzin, which comes with built-in apps like Netflix, YouTube, and Amazon Prime, while packing native 1080p resolution, surprisingly loud and immersive 8-watt stereo speakers, and effortless setup with autofocus and auto keystone, as well as intelligent obstacle avoidance to adapt to your environment. The the sweet $99 pricing will only be available for a limited time, so use the link down in the description below to order today. And now jumping back to multi-core performance in Geekbench 6, you can see that surprisingly, the X Elite with the 12-core CPU is just 
barely behind the M3 Pro with its 12 core, which is very surprising because honestly, the M3 Pro is very expensive with an MSRP of $2,000. And yes, you can find it on Amazon for $1,700, which is a great deal, but the X Elite you can find for basically $1,300, $1,400. So it's in a different league, as well as the Lunar Lake and some of those other chips. I was honestly expecting AMD's chip to be by far the fastest, faster than the X Elite in Geekbench 6, but it looks like it isn't, and it actually is still faster than Apple's M4, which is a good sign for AMD. However, the Lunar Lake surprisingly is the slowest out of the bunch. And if you think about it, it makes sense because it only has an eight core CPU with only four performance cores. And they've also disabled hyper threading, which doesn't help in terms of multi-core performance. But honestly, if Intel is able to have these laptops priced low enough, it's still gonna be fine for most people. And I'm actually really surprised by Apple's M4 chip with its new 10 core layout scoring almost 14 and a half thousand points, which is incredibly competitive compared to the rest of these chips. But now let's move over to Cinebench 2024's multi-core CPU test, which works a lot differently because unlike Geekbench, which has a bunch of short bursts of random different tasks, it has one large productivity CPU render that you have to do with all of the cores. So it's more realistic to what you would kind of expect with different productivity apps. But here, the major shocker is that that AMD chip with a 12 core CPU getting over 1500 points. That's likely because one, the cooling is gonna be really good on those laptops. And two, it could be because that score was actually leaked from a little mini PC, which probably had really good cooling as well. And because AMD is known for having really good multi-threaded performance with hyper-threading enabled, that's probably why the Lunar Lake performed so bad here without hyper-threading with only eight cores. Keep in mind, that score was estimated from the difference from Cinebench R23, which I did have a score of, but you can see that Apple's M3 Pro is just a little bit faster than the X11 with the max fan mode from the Vivo book, 1,003 points. But on average, if you're not maxing out the fans, the X Elite is about 860. And we unfortunately don't have a Cinebench score for the M4 since we only have that chip in the iPad Pro right now. But I do expect the AMD to perform by far the best since they're pushing for maximum performance all the way. And now let's move over to graphics, starting with Geekbench 6's OpenCL or Metal in the case of Mac OS for all of the Apple chips that we tested. And here you can see something really weird. The X Elite is performing terribly. It is so far behind the rest of the competition. And that's likely because the X185 GPU in the X Elite is actually adapted from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which shares the same number of cores or ALUs, but Qualcomm simply boosted the clocks and made it clock higher for more performance. And on the other hand, all of the other chips here have GPUs that were designed for these laptops with higher performance. So you can see that surprisingly, the M3 10 core actually outperforms both the AMD and Intel chips. That might be because Metal is better optimized. Of course, the M4 is a little bit better and the M3 Pro has an 18 core, which is a lot faster than the rest of the pack. And then that brings us to 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme, which is very, very well optimized for ARM devices, which is why you see the X Elite now performing just slightly behind the X86 Intel and AMD chips. Surprisingly, the M3 is slightly ahead because it is optimized for ARM and the M3 Pro is like almost double. The M4 also very impressive in terms of performance, but keep in mind that the AMD was estimated based on the time spy difference that I'll get to right now. 
So here is the chart for 3 d Mark's Time Spy, which is an industry standard benchmark that a lot of the Windows laptop people use. And here you can see that we don't have any of the Apple chips because you can't run Time Spy on these Apple chips. You can see that the X Elite is not performing very well. Basically, half the performance of the Intel 30 watt and the higher end AMD 890M, both scoring about 4,200 points. You can also see that when you clock them down to 15 and 17 watts, the performance does go down, but it's still so far ahead of the X Elite, which might actually be emulating this test, but still, the graphics performance of those Intel and AMD chips is destroying the X Elite. And finally, we have probably the most accurate, latest, most modern test from 3D Mark, which is Steel Nomad Lite. And here, I did have to estimate the performance of the Lunar Lake based on the time spy difference. So it should be around here, but you can see that the X Elite is basically half the performance of the Intel and AMD chips, which now both of them are faster than both the M3 and the M4 chip, which I tested in the iPad Pro. So they are probably better for gaming. And of course we can see the M3 Pro with the 18 core at 37.6 FPS. Of course it is in a different league because it's quite a bit more expensive than what we expect a lot of these laptops to come in at. So now with those leaked benchmark charts out of the way, I wanna answer a very important question. Which one do I think is gonna be the battery life king? Well, first of all, Apple's Mac chips have always been incredibly efficient and are currently the best for battery life by far, especially the M3 MacBook Air. The M3 Pro MacBook Pros definitely use more battery due to the very bright mini LED display and the higher power usage, but Apple's upcoming M4 MacBooks are going to be even more efficient thanks to the extra two e-cores that can handle more work together without having to fire up the P-cores. And especially with the future M4 MacBook Air, which I believe is going to come with the binned down 9-core version, which has only three performance cores. So that 15-inch M4 MacBook Air will be the battery life king. But now discussing the battery life for the new Windows laptop chips, we've been testing the Snapdragon X Elite for weeks and it's definitely the best battery life we have ever seen in a Windows laptop. For example, we tested the Surface Laptop 6 with Intel's latest Meteor Lake 165H chip versus this Surface Laptop 7 with the 80 SKU of the X Elite and this thing was at 39% battery life when the Intel laptop completely died, which is super impressive. However, it's still nowhere near as good as the battery life of Apple's MacBooks. We did multiple hands-on comparisons where we tested everything from designs, speakers, displays with a lot of standby, a ton of heavy testing for performance, and in every single video, the MacBooks won. For example, versus the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 was left with 37% battery life after the full video was done, versus the X Elite with 12%. Versus the M3 13-inch MacBook Air, the M3 had 50% at the end, while the X Elite had 32. Versus the 15-inch MacBook Air, with the M3, it had 48% while the X Elite had 40% and that's with the Book 4 Edge. And finally with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it was left with 25% battery life while the X Elite had 7% at the end of testing. And of course this kind of makes sense seeing as the X Elite chip has 12 performance cores and zero E cores. So it's actually impressive that it's competing so well in terms of CPU performance, but getting really good battery life compared to Intel's chips. But Intel has Lunar Lake up their sleeve, which I believe might actually beat the X Elite in terms of battery life for a couple of different reasons. Number one, they cared about battery life so much that they went from a 16 core design with Meteor Lake down to eight cores, even dropping from six P cores down to just four. Number two, they of course have a silicon advantage 
being on TSMC's three nanometer N3B, just like Apple's M3 chip. And number three, Intel was willing to remove hyper threading on their cores in order to save a little bit more battery life, as well as redesigning everything about their thread director and a bunch of their features. So I think that Lunar Lake will actually have the best battery life on any Windows laptop with sacrificing some of that multi-core performance, followed by the X Elite behind it and AMD in the last place, mostly because they have an x86 chip that's still pushing for high CPU and GPU performance. So with all that said, let's get into my conclusion. The X Elite and the AMD chip will have the best multi-core CPU performance this year, with the advantage going to AMD since it's x86 and won't have to emulate apps, and it's generally better for longer workloads like we see in Cinebench 2024. And as far as graphics, AMD and Intel will trade blows with each other being around the same GPU performance, while the X Elite will be dead last and should not be considered for its GPU whatsoever. And the M4 MacBooks will be, in my opinion, the best overall, being the best balanced out of all the chips in terms of CPU performance with its shockingly high single core scores and snappiness in web browsing, all the way to the really fast GPU performance, and by far the best in terms of battery life as long as you're okay with macOS. So there you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed this compilation of all of those leaked benchmarks and my thoughts on which chip is gonna be the best. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Definitely click above to subscribe and check out one of those two videos right there, including our review of the Surface Laptop 7. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.